Hey guys, in the previous part we were referencing widgets by IDs. You can also reference widgets using Kiwi properties. But before we learn how to do it, let's talk about Kiwi properties in general. To start with, what are Kiwi properties? Don't be misled by the name. They are not to be confused with the regular Python properties that you know. We've been using the word property a lot since the first part of this series. You know that there is a text property in the label class, there is a size property in the widget class, and there are the min, max, and value properties in the slider class, and many, many more. These are all examples of inherited properties. We get them out of the box when you inherit from a class where they are defined. Now, before we go any further, let's have a look at our test files from the previous part. Here's the Python file, and here's the Kiwi file. Now, if you run this program, you will see something like this. As you remember, when you press the first button, the value of the text property on the label will change to changed. So, when the first button is pressed, the setText method defined in the test layout class is called setText. Here it's called root setText. And here is the method. This method changes the text property on the label. But the text on the first button changes too although we didn't write any code telling it to do so. This is how properties work, they react to changes. Even if you had tens of other widgets with the text property set to the labels text, they would all react to any change of the text property on the label. Now before we really dive into the realm of properties, let's just briefly discuss their main features. The one feature that you already know is that Kiwi properties automatically observe any changes and react accordingly. Kiwi properties implement the observer design pattern. You can specify what should happen when a property's value changes. You can bind your own function as a callback to changes of a property's value. Besides, Kiwi properties can be used with validation constraints. We use this to validate the values that we try to set our property to. Finally, Kiwi properties optimize memory management because a single instance of a property is shared across all the instances of the class where they were defined. There are actually a couple types of Kiwi properties. If you look at the documentation of the label class, for example, you'll find the following description of the text property is over here. Text property. Now, have a look at the last sentence. Text is a string property and defaults to an empty string. This is what interests us most at this moment. It says that text is a string property. And now let's have a look at some more properties in the documentation. For example, there's the size property in the widget class. So we have size, and here it says size is a reference list property of width height properties. So this is a reference list property, another type of properties. What about the max property in the slider class? So, slider class, max property. Max is a numeric property and defaults to 100. So, this time it's a numeric property. These are just a couple examples, but there are more property types. In particular, there are numeric property, string property, list property, object property, boolean property, bounded numeric property, option property, Reference list property, alias property, dict property. We're going to use many of them in our project. Some of them have pretty self explanatory names, like numeric property or Boolean property. But there are also some that we can use in more advanced scenarios, like the option property or alias property, for example. First, though, we'll see how to use Kitty properties to reference widgets. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like it, a thumbs up would be great. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos. If you want to leave a comment or ask a question, welcome to do so. Thanks for watching.